My name is Carl. My name is Oscar. And this is Who Would Watch This? Where we review bad films and decide who would watch this. Mm. Apart from us. Alright, Oscar, what are we talking about today? Well, Carl, today we're going to be talking about Exorcist II, semicolon, The Heretic. <laughs> It's a great title, I'm not going to lie. It rolls off a tongue. It does. It's currently got a 15% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 3.8 on IMDb, and a 2 on Letterboxd. It is ranked 98 on IMDb's bottom 100 of all time. Oscar, what's the plot? Well, very quick. We'll go into the plot a lot more, but very quickly, it's a straight follow-up from The Exorcist, the 1973 one, I believe. Yeah. Uh, A teenage girl, once possessed by a demon, finds that it still lurks within her. Meanwhile, a priest investigates the death of the girl's exorcist. I wish I just read that instead of watching this film. No, none of it. Also, when you think about the synopsis, you're like, it's, that, that is the plot. That's yeah. like literally, that's that thin. Yeah. And it's stretched for so long. So long. <laughs> so hours, unbelievably and long. it's probably the longest one of these films has felt. I mean, it is, is it the longest film we've reviewed so far? Um, no, the Kissing with 2 was like oh, 20 minutes that longer. That was the Irishman. Oh, painful. Speaking of the Irishman, mm. who's a huge fan of this film? <laughs> the only person I could find, it seems that Martin Scorsese, when it first came out, was like, not that bad. It's, you'd look at it and go, you're wrong. Yes. <laughs> what? Mm. He's we a... Get... <laughs> yeah. We're diving. I... Th- Hang on, hang on. I won't spoil it. <laughs> no, we'll, but... we'll also, to clear things up a little, mm. my voice might sound a bit different because I'm very sick. That's fine. Carl's it... getting on a little bit of tonsillitis. It's cool. I mean, famously, at the moment, that's a fine thing to be. It's good yeah. to be in clothes. We're actually in a, a two by two meter room. Carl's been coughing. You'll probably get it. Yeah. I've been, been coughing into my shirt. <laughs> I did. I, I don't know if the listener at home, I know what you're wondering. Did I have a COVID test? I did. Hey. I was, uh, have you had one? Uh, no, I've seen... Yeah, so I wasn't aware that they... Like, so they shove one down your throat. Mm-hmm. And then, from what from my understanding, they don't get a new one. They then shove your throat one up your nose. <laughs> and then take that out. And so... <laughs> yeah, so I, don't, I don't think you meant they have yet to get a new one. So they've just been using the old one. From, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a piece of wood. I don't want to reuse it. <laughs> Come here with your big nose. Yeah. Sharing is caring. <laughs> The well, I was like, wouldn't you use two, like one for the nose and one for the throat? Like, I don't know if because I was frightened and I had my eyes closed, there was a switcheroo. I don't think they did. I think they just yeah. I, mean, I think they used one. Yeah, makes sense. Get both samples. It use does. Half it also makes sense not to do nose then throat. Y- yes. It's a bit gr- Can you it's imagine? Because they, they show I'm it up saying- here. Oh, do they? They like you. F- oh, not that f- it's up here. You feel it. Yeah. And it lingers. When they take it out, you go, Ugh. Oh, okay. It was really off-putting. I bought myself some uh, some Uber Eats as a, <laughs> as a reward. I've got a big boy stuff. thing. I need some food for Uber <laughs> I was Eats. like, I've got to self-isolate for 24 <laughs> hours to my results. I'm going to have some ramen. <laughs> going to stick it um, up my nose. <laughs> so during being very sick mm. and having my COVID test and missing work, somehow the heretic was still the worst thing about my week. <laughs> wow. And put that on the poster. for the best review it's got so far. This oh. film is probably the oldest we're going to review for a while. I don't think there's... No, yeah, actually not. I don't think there is an older one on, like, the bottom 100. The, the one, another one I would really like to do in future mm. is this terrible Captain America made-for-TV film. I have seen that I have clips heard. of that. Yeah. It seems awful. But I feel like that's similar year. I think yeah. this is probably the oldest film we're going to do. Yeah. it's it's Is it 80s or still 70s? No, it's 70s. No, 77. Yeah. So it's only four years after the original. Now, I had to watch the first one, the mm. first Exorcist, because I had never seen it before. I'd missed it. Yeah. Uh, so what would you think of it? Well, it was the same? Sa- same boat. Um... I really liked it. I was surprised at what it was. I thought it's a lot more story than just sort of spooks. I mean, the spooks sort of rock up 40 minutes at the end, but the rest of it's pretty good. I, the cinematography is gorgeous. Yeah, it's up. surprisingly very modern. Yeah. Like, I thought it could pass as something made in the 90s, like early 90s. Um, yeah, it is really different. It starts in, like... Uh, it starts in Iraq, it? starts in Iraq, which yeah. is just like, silly, because this film is set in... 
Africa. Thought yeah. They would go back to Iraq, but well, it's just like it definitely plays because it won best screenplay at the Oscars. Yeah. So it definitely plays more of like a investigative drama into why this girl's behaving the way she is mm. than it does a horror film. I guess that's probably why it was unnerving because, like, I was, I never really, I thought the like I'd seen so many horror films since that yeah. had kind of done riffs on this film. That meant that it probably diluted a lot of what was special about this movie back in the day for yeah. us um but i still got caught up in a lot of the medical stuff there was the part where they inserted something into her neck and then a yeah. tube and the blood was spurting out it was what they were doing to the daughter a lot of the time i thought was really cruel it was and the sort of i think what do you call it the x-ray machine that was spinning around yeah her. that big like nrm yeah so there yeah. was it was really it, to me honestly it felt very kubrick-esque I was going to say that, yeah, this one, Lil <laughs> Bits has got it in, yeah. but for the most, because apparently he was going to direct the sequel. Yes, he was, yeah, he yeah. was pitched it, and he had said, um... It has to be more, more scary. It has to be more, like, violent and sweary and sexual. Yeah. He was like, everything more. And the director was like, cool, that's a pe- well, pencil. <laughs> I heard, uh, more insects? <laughs> cool. <laughs> I put the locust things. budget <laughs> I heard most of it now takes place in Africa. <laughs> Perfect. That's why I wanted. <laughs> but yeah, The Exorcist. I think yeah, it's. I think it's held up. I think. Oh, solid recommend. Yeah, you know what was also weird about the first one was the fact that I was excited about getting to see Max von Sydow young. Yeah. No, no <laughs> he's always he's been, been old. old. I was like, wow, he looks in Star Wars. I wonder what he looked like forty years ago. <laughs> that, <laughs> just that. <laughs> I was also like, oh, did he ever win an Oscar before he passed away? Did he? No, he didn't. But he was nominated for Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. <laughs> Go him. Go him. <laughs> Do you remember that 9-11 no. movie with Tom Hanks and oh. a kid of autism? and Is Just it... like like the biggest piece of Oscar bait that year, essentially. Oh, I do remember that. It flashed up. I remember seeing the trailer for that yeah. going, wow, that's gonna... And then nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It was that, like... I think it was the same year as, like, The Artist and Hugo. It was, like, a bad year for films. What do you mean? The Artist is one of my favourite films. <laughs> as, and Hugo is one of mine. <laughs> I guess now you guys know what our favourite films are. Yeah. So no Q&A needed. <laughs> That's right. Don't ask us what our favourite films are. We've just Already said, said it. 2008 was our year. Seriously, we've been getting a lot of fucking emails <laughs> about what our favourite films are, and you need to calm down. We've told you. It's the artist for both of us. You know, shout out to Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. <laughs> I was too harsh on it. Can we do a cut? Like, I've, we've, I've stopped the podcast to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pause. Pause. Two and a half hours yeah, later. later. Man, that was a surprisingly quiet film. <laughs> what would you give it, Carl? Oh, a nine out of 35 Piss easy. All yeah. right. All right. Let's jump into... Oh, God. Okay. So this movie begins in, like, a hut. Yeah. And I already was like, man, huge step down in direction. So I went and looked up who the director was. Yes. And don't really know a lot of his movies, but I do know his most famous one, which I've seen a few times with my father, which yeah. is Deliverance. Okay, cool. Which is a terrific uh, thriller. Yeah. Um, a really, really good one. Like, a high recommend on that. And so I was shocked to see... <laughs> How poor this he was to this. begin with. Because I checked out his the rest of his other films, and they all get like a six out of IMDb. Not that like you should base your entire opinion on a film on that, but yeah. it seems like he's consistently meh. Meh. The D- Deliverance was is high, isn't it? He had an, one that was seven point nine. I don't know if it was Deliverance actually. He had Surely it was one. Deliverance. Deliverance is a terrific film. I think you got nominated and stuff. Deliverance has a seven point seven. Was nominated for three Oscars. Was it definitely him that directed it? Yeah, he was. He, he's the producer too. He got nominated for two Oscars that year. He got there director go. and picture. So and he did this. Yeah, and this is all him. It was one of my favorite things because I also learned he absolutely hates the original Exorcist. Oh yeah, he was like, I I don't. <laughs> if I heard that fact and I looked it up, he's had he had a kid. And he was like, I didn't like how they 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 just tortured a girl. I want to make it a positive message. And then he made this. Yeah, which I think is why Scott says he liked it so much, because he's a very religious man, yeah. Mr. Scott says he. And this is, I guess, pro-religion in terms of faith and helping. Okay. Because I think, well, I mean, if you look at the message at the end, I know we're jumping ahead, but I mean, in comparison to the first film, yeah, that first movie had so much hate and controversy around it in terms of what it meant for, like, priests, and it was a violent depiction of religion and demons, and 
people were very upset by it. But was it that just the imagery? Because I feel like is it Christian- the satanic imagery i guess i guess that's bad but also the priest does help this girl in the first one i'd say mm. that's a positive message for christianity it saved her life yeah we're gonna jump <laughs> jump into religion now <laughs> yeah that's thoughts yeah. what are you an atheist uh, yes. <laughs> i'm a buddhist uh... <laughs> i'm times new roman <laughs> catholic <laughs> <laughs> okay let's jump into the plot okay it so he's, starts... he's already in this hut yeah <laughs> yeah and this woman screaming our assumption is that she's possessed yeah um and then she begins to burn alive mm. very funny <laughs> that was funny it starts off and you're kind of like oh maybe it's but no that's <laughs> it's... honestly it's a perfect start to the film because this burning woman is what we expect for the rest of it. Like, I watched them night to night back, like, so I went, oh, I'll watch The Exorcist this, like, Monday night, and mm-hmm. then I'll watch Exorcist 2 Tuesday night. Yeah. And it, with the last ones ending so fresh in my mind, and it was so violent, and it caught me off guard. Mm-hmm. For this then to begin as, like, a screaming girl in a hut. Yeah. Is standing completely still with, like, her arms weird in the air, like she's a mannequin. And then just <laughs> burst into flames. Like and then that. just, like, an ADR <laughs> scream over the top, and I went, oh, no. <laughs> but then it smash cuts to tap dancing, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> That's right. Because, um, Ray- Reagan's back. She's back. Four years older. Yeah. And I've got things to say about naming your daughter Reagan. <laughs> It was before Ronald Reagan. I know it's, but is it? I know it's before. No, Ronald Reagan's still a big actor, though, isn't he? It, oh yeah, yes. But I, w- I mean, he was the president. I mean, yeah, I mean he was but, technically in the zeitgeist, but I wouldn't say. Like, but is Reagan like is Reagan really a uh, like a? I don't know. I think I think I don't like the name in general. So yeah. I look. I'm sorry to all the Reagans out there. Well, we have most of our fan base is Reagans. Well, yeah, I know. We have listeners in the Netherlands, all named Reagan. <laughs> um, <laughs> very popular name over there. But yeah, I don't know. I'm a. It's a hard part. It's a not recommend on naming your child Reagan from me. So Oscar was the first one for you. Then painful to sit through because you're going. Oh, well, she was getting punished for it. So okay, you were like, like okay. oh, thank God that child's being tortured by a demon. I don't mind. I think the devil was down in hell, going, "What? They named their fucking Reagan? child Reagan? Oh, I need to do some possessing. Oh, I'm gonna go with... crawl my way up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, he flew himself like a bee. <laughs> So it starts now. Reagan's back. She's. I back. was not expecting her to be back. I'm surprised that the caster has come back. Oh, so were you? Yeah. Did you have? I had no clue how direct of a sequel this was going to be. No, me neither. I was. I was expecting a cheap cash grab. I thought they were going to do the same thing again, which they kind of have. Yeah. But like real cheap and real dirty, and just like it's again like kind of like Home Alone Four. I thought they'd do that. What we got. But shittier. That. Yeah. Yeah, which I think I read was the plan Okay. to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it spiraled out of control because the first movie garnered so much um, kind of hate yeah. and confusion mm-hmm. and dislike from uh, the public over it who were Catholic. Yeah. They were not allowed to shoot any of their original locations again. Okay. So they had to rebuild... All of their sets and the house and the road and the exterior blew their budget out of proportion. Mm. And it became Warner Brothers' most uh, expensive film ever during that time in 1977. Which is insane because the sets they return to are maybe five minutes or ten minutes of the plot. Yeah. The rest is just in this psych ward, which is where Reagan is now. Yeah. It, is it a psych ward or is it a futuristic lab? Oh, I kind of love it. That's my issue. I love this setting. I think it looks amazing. I, but like most of this film, I don't know why it's in this film. Absolutely no clue. I thought we, it was we were going down a very different path. Yeah. Because <laughs> when she starts getting like... I was One, I was really confused by her therapist because I forgot what her mum looked like. And my assumption was that's just her mum. That's See, I looked it up. From what I can get from, like, my book, Wikipedia knowledge, I think she was maybe recast as the mum, mm. but then, and the therapist was maybe a man, but then they were like, feminism, go them. She then became the therapist, and then they didn't have a mum figure, so then they got that nurse right. to sort of look after her. Yeah, and come back into it. Even yeah. though she, at the end of the first exorcist, said, I don't want to be a part of your family anymore. Exactly. So... The other stuff that confused me, because we're very, we're in like a few sentences, we're caught up to date on Reagan's life. Yeah. She's a tap dancer. 
Taps. She's having fun. She's in therapy. Yeah. She's sort of going through it. But I think she's pretty yeah. well adjusted, it seems. She, yeah. She says her mum has a new career now. Yeah. No clue what that is, considering her mum was an actress in the first movie. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and they were like, she's not in this one. Move yeah. on. <laughs> and she's got a new career. It immediately intrigued me because I went, what's her new career? She was so famous. She was a famous filmmaker. I don't, uh, Sorry, film star. I don't know many professions that can go into finance. You can't really just swap over. Yeah. So I don't know what she was doing, but she's out of it. Yeah. And so anyway, the the therapist is like, hey, I've invented a machine. <laughs> <laughs> I've invented a machine that lets me see into your dreams and memories. Carl, if you're writing a film and you have essentially mind reading abilities, do you make this film? No. No. <laughs> I you don't. shouldn't. Also, it's shocking to me that we've there. Millions of dollars they had. Their machine is a stick with a light. <laughs> Two light bulbs just flashing. Anything else? They don't, they don't even give it like radioactive something. Yeah. It's just, uh, this light bulb bleeps, you get hypnotized, I can see into your brain. And that's what we're going to be basing the whole plot upon. Oh my, and it's for a very long amount of time that they'll just be looking at a light. And it's flashing at their face. <laughs> and I read this story, and I don't know if it's true, but I read this story that this is when, at press screenings and movie screenings, this is when people began to, like, immediately turn on the film and cackle at it. And I read the story that uh, the producers of the movie were dropped off to the pre- like of a premiere okay. or to sneak into the back of, like, a test audience to screening. To see what they were doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they sat down and then their, like, limo drivers all went out to get lunch. They were mm-hmm. on their lunch break while they were watching the movie. Yeah. And one person stood up in the audience during this scene and they went, the people that made the movie are in this cinema, get them. <laughs> and the audience chased them out of the theater <laughs> and they ran out onto the street, but because their limo drivers didn't have, didn't have the cars there, they just got chased down the street. And I don't know if it's true, but I want it to be I true. I want it to be true. If this film would then make up for that because just the idea of a bunch of producers running away from it, such a quick mob to form. <laughs> oh, I'm just get it, boys. It's, yeah. I love it. They made it. Get it. I'd be like, you're 15 minutes in. Give it a chance. Yeah, exactly. Because it's. I would say the start's boring. Oh, it's insanely boring. I also don't get the new priest. I was very confused by him. I wasn't sure. I, I was like, was he in the last movie? That's, He's not. I guess that's the issue. I was like, we've seen it so quickly. Yeah. And the fact that we've forgotten. Here's the thing. Everybody in 1977 looks identical. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the thing with filmmaking. They were like, God damn, it's the same guy. No, no, we got a new actor. He's from this other country. It's fine. They, they all look the exact same. So I can't really remember why the priest comes... Why does the priest kind of integrate into Reagan's story? Okay, so I Wikipedia Wikipedia did, did this. He was the guy at the start with the Italian girl blowing up, and he's like, oh, fucked up. All right, I need to go back. Then the Pope, he's in. Also, oh, we're saying it's his fault. She blew herself no, up. No, 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 no. He's just like, I fucked up. I need to learn more. The Pope's like, all right, even though you fucked this up. I need you to investigate this last guy who died. The uh, other priest in the first one. Yeah. You're technically all we have, and you're already a bit disgraced, so just go do it by yourself over there. Also, I hear this chick, Reagan, was exercised by him last. Go check out her. Right. So they go. So he's to look into Max von Sydow's death and stuff, right? Yes. So Reagan's also saying she doesn't remember any of the events of the first movie. Yes. Which is maybe or maybe not a lie, mm. but um, so she come, so he comes in and is like to the therapist, let's force Reagan to do the dream machine theme jig. Mm. Yep. And so begins a scene where they go into her subconscious, and the therapist gets stuck there. Yeah. Then the priest has to jump into the machine, goes into the other person's subconscious of their subconscious that was in Reagan, mm. and then begins, like, a layer-layer scene of, like, the events of the last exorcist happening over the top of the first one. Yeah. So the events of this the exorcist. One, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they're all fighting for her heart. <laughs> Which is as silly as it sounds. My note was, that looked okay. Yeah, I, I was. Thought... it looked like they were actually there. My thing, though, was, it's... Sounds exciting, but it's just them talking about it. Oh, yeah. They're like, I can see her now. I'm in the dream. I'm in the dream. I'm in the dream. Imagine, 
I would say imagine if Inception was just the two people that were asleep mumbling to each other about it, the no, events. No, 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 no. It's then on Inception at the plane right at the start and then it's just some It guy... stays on the plane yeah. the entire time. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Like, what do you think they're dreaming about? I don't know, a van going into water maybe? Don't be silly. Go, go drive the plane, money <laughs> yeah. boy. What do you think's happening? Well, I think his wife's come back and she's ruined the whole heist. There's this spinny thing. You wouldn't get it. It's fine. <laughs> um, so it's silly, it's dumb, and it goes for about oh, four minutes, which doesn't sound that much, but it's... Oh, it's, it's bizarre. But what I thought was going to happen was I thought Max von Sydow's subconsciousness was going to go into the therapist. Okay. Because their faces lined up. And I went, oh, are we getting a body switch film? Is this Freaky Friday <laughs> slash The Exorcist? Which would be fun. Yeah, I was pretty excited. Immediately, they don't do that. No. It just... They just go that... Is the priest now a little bit, like, exercise... Like, like possessed? Yeah, like, they're saying... So they're saying the demon's still in Reagan. Yes. But, like, what I don't get is the fact that there's, it's not like there's a ticking time clock on their, like, if we don't fix this, the demon's going to come back in, like, a year. Yeah. For all we know, she's just going to live her life and die. Yeah, there's no stakes. There's no there's no stakes of being like, no, if we don't do this now, she's going to die. There's no, like, sense of urgency. Because she's been fine, and the only reason it comes out is because they force it out yeah. during hypnosis. But anyway, so Jean, is that the name of the therapist or the uh yes that's right yeah so she nurse wakes ratchet. up and then the priest wakes up yes nurse, nurse ratchet and they did you see, have you seen cuckoo's nest yeah i love it yes, yeah she's very good in it she was very good yeah and this was like she did that and then i guess she must have done this immediately yeah. after yeah. shame for her i know but also I, you know what she's not terrible in this film no i, I just i don't think anyone's actually that yeah. terrible the writing's a bit <laughs> everything else is a bit yeah but the acting is they're doing the best they can i mm. think Honestly, that that's fine. Yeah. But did you see the trailer for Ratchet? The Sarah Paulson? Yeah, I did, actually. Yeah. Thought it looked quite good. Yeah, I'm quite keen. Yeah. But, you know, that's a trailer, so we'll see. We'll see. I thought, uh, what's his face? The Ryan Murphy shows. The new, uh... Like, the new the two. Like, like, Hollywood and, uh... The Hollywood didn't have a good trailer, but I thought The Politician had a good trailer. And I thought both of those shows were not very good, and I did not finish them. No, but but I feel like Ratchet looks good. But I feel like he's just shit. He's got so many projects. I don't know. How, he... What's his involvement? Yeah. Is, is he just sitting there with a pack of cigarettes and he's like, a remake of Cuckoo's Nest? <laughs> just... No, he just walked in, Sarah Paulson. All right. <laughs> he's Take like, her. He's, he's basically only got Sarah Paulson, Jessica Lang, and Darren Chris. <laughs> and it's those three cards and he just throws them at projects. And if they land near it, that's what they get. Oh no, I've got Evan Peters. Uh, X Men over there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Ben Platt again. Uh, uh, just into the track. Whoa! <laughs> so yeah, nurse, but yeah. yeah, bit of a bit of a tangent. Bit of a tangent. My mistake. Anyway, so then, the <laughs> which I th- sorry, I think it's fitting because I think how many times did you pause this and go? Oh god! <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I did not finish this movie in a sitting. <laughs> I gave I... myself some time to reflect. I almost turned to Christianity <laughs> <laughs> just to get away from. This just film. to get away yeah. from it. <laughs> Well, I did watch it in a sitting. I paused it, but I watched it in a sitting. It's we'll keep going on tangents because this is painful. This, <laughs> this first hour is painful. It is the uh, but one of my things that I really like is is so after this scene, the um, therapist comes up to the priest and is like, "Hey, Reagan did a picture," and I'm like, "When did you fucking have time to do this picture?" Exactly. Um, it's like, also, to me, it was like, what does it mean? Why are you giving it to him? <laughs> does she just want to demonstrate that she draws it's well? established that she's a painter, but that's like two, like an hour and a half at the end. She's like, oh, she paints. But um, yeah, so what's the painting of? Uh, so it's of him? Him. But it doesn't look like it him? It like David Bowie. With fire <laughs> coming out of his face. Yeah, so, and the, like the, but they, they do this still shot on it like it's haunting. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not a haunting picture. No, it wasn't that terrifying. My child drew that in preschool. I'd be proud. That's on the fridge. (laughs) That's on the fridge. Straight to the fridge. Framed? Question mark? The fridge. I don't want to get my child's hopes up too much, okay? I'm setting them on the wrong path. I'm naming them Reagan. (laughs) So they can get, like, immediately, they'll just get abused on the soccer field. (laughs) Yo, Reagan. (laughs) They'll be like, Dad, please, look, I've had a hard day. Can you please frame my picture? (laughs) 
I'm going to go, no, it's on the fridge. <laughs> What's your name? That's right, Reagan. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> also, this is when I realised how much the priest sounds like William Shatner. Oh, why wow, you've ruined this. <laughs> it does. He even kind of looks like him. He's kind of just like a melty person. <laughs> he just looks a bit melted. Yeah, he does. He looks like he looks unwell. <laughs> He's shrunken into himself just a little bit. I saw um, a picture on IMDb. He looked like a hunk back in the day. <laughs> and I was like, oh, who was he in the film? I went, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but anyway, he gets this picture of himself in flames and like is like, whatever. Whatever. He like throws it away. He then, <laughs> minutes <laughs> or seconds later, seconds. is like, there's a fire. <laughs> Does he smell the fire? No, he just sort of he feels it. it. <laughs> he runs down to the basement. And Carl, what would you call is a blazing fire? Oh, well, being Australian. <laughs> yes. We, we know a thing We know a little bit about fire. fires, Okay. <laughs> Um, I'll tell you right now, that's a blazing fire. That is a blazing fire. <laughs> a small little fire. Smoldering in a fire. In a cardboard box. Yep. And so I would say, God, what would put it out? Your jacket? I think your jacket could fan it out. No, I don't think that's a silly car. What else would you use to get that oh, out of the fire? Oh, God. Um, Jesus. I think there was... Probably just blowing on it or spitting at it is probably enough no, no, to put uh, it out. Let me give you some options. Okay, we've got a fire extinguisher. Yeah. Got a, like a, a wet blanket. Yeah. Or a pile of wood. Mm. Now this pile of wood is constructed to be a crutch. Would you use the crutch to beat the fire to death, Carl? Would you use a crutch to beat some fire to death? A wooden crutch to beat this fire to death? Are we saying we're beating the fire to death? Or are we simply fanning the flame oh, I think into I think getting it You bigger. are right. We're fanning the flame with a crutch. <laughs> Does it work, Carl? <laughs> No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it does do? It makes the picture come to life, I guess. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, like, they kind of match cut with him with the flames. And the, it, looked, it was a very weird yeah. shot. Well, I just like the fact that they were like, because so the priest believes in Reagan. Yes. And then the therapist doesn't. Yeah. But the therapist is like, oh, maybe it is true. Because she predicted this with her picture. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, that would be good had the picture not been drawn a minute before this. Yeah. It's, she, like, it's always like she, she led the fire. Yeah. <laughs> just so in trouble. trouble. <laughs> How did the fire fucking start? It was a cage. They had to open the cage. Because <laughs> it, it's the explanation that... that oh, should we tell what the demon's name is? Just so we can establish. Is, the demon's name is... <laughs> <laughs> Say it. <laughs> it's Zuzu. <laughs> You're goddamn right it is. <laughs> zoo, zoo. <laughs> zoo, zoo. I'll tell you right now, don't do a horror film and name <laughs> your main monster Zoo Zoo. <laughs> so Zoo Zoo lights this little fire. <laughs> zoo Zoo's the most flamboyant <laughs> demon I have ever heard of. What's that, what's, that, what's that demon doing to you insides? The demon's making me fabulous. <laughs> He's zoozooing me. <laughs> I'm having a little zoozoo day. Can you imagine going, oh, what's inside of you? It's a demon named Zuzu. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a priest would just be like, all right, fuck off. <laughs> oh, you're one of those. <laughs> yeah, <demons. have> you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's 1977, so they're not pro Zuzu. Yet. Oh, yeah, they're pretty anti Zuzu, <laughs> to be honest. Zuzu's gonna release this child when gay marriage is accepted, so it's a long road. It's like Brad and Angelina, they're only waiting until everyone can. Yeah. Zuzu. <laughs> so, <laughs> him, the fact that he discovers this fire saves all the children or some shit. Yeah. Because they're know. at like a like a mental. Like I asylum. don't get where they are. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. They're just people rolling big cushion, yeah. like, like Pentagon like cushions in the background. It's kind of, it's meant to be like a rehabili uh, rehabilitation center, but mm. and I don't know. So this is when we also get uh, Reagan's first kind of dream. Yeah. Um, which is Tim Burton's horny fantasy <laughs> is what I would describe it as. It's a very stylized Africa, a giant close up of a moth. Oh, that's somebody a locust. Yeah, somebody someone swinging a thing. An African boy is swinging and that does get explained. But again, bad. Yeah. <laughs> it this, doesn't come through. This film, because I'm going to say it now, and it's a bit, a bit con. I like the dream scenes. I like the aesthetic. I just don't know what it's doing in this film. I don't know why it's in this film. I don't know why they went down this path. Counter argument. 
It sucks, and your opinion's wrong. <laughs> I think you're wrong. I think the cool... I like the shot that the locust <laughs> is flying around. I thought that was quite cool, flying through the locust path. Yeah, how do you get that shot in 1977? With a helicopter? Yeah, it must be a helicopter. Yeah. Um, we also see where Reagan's living. And it's a fucking penthouse. Oh my I don't God. know how they're this affording is... it. <laughs> yeah, or well, I mean, she was a Hollywood actor, so I assume they're living in the most... It's 1970s, but it seemed like like 80s, sort of like hyper-futuristic. It's gorgeous. It's mm. so cool. The pigeon coop is like this <laughs> Frank Gehry like building where the pigeons come to roost. It is. It's like the opera house. Yeah. It's in the opera house of pigeon coops. I wouldn't even know how to get the pigeons in yeah. or out. They'd oh, probably they, just die. They were, cave- they were cemented in there. <laughs> um, so this... Oh, God. <laughs> so, so the dream forces her out onto the ledge. Yes. For uh, this giant penthouse has just a piece of oh furious <laughs> OHS nightmare. This balcony is like a castle. It has like a bit of balcony and then nothing. It's a s- straight fall down. And I looked it up. There was nothing stopping her. She genuinely was walking out. That feet shot. <laughs> she could have fallen. They were like, well, if she dies, she dies. They had no. Yet yeah, they did it for real. They had no way to do it in a safe manner. Apparently, <laughs> it's. Is she the original Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise as a small child watching that going, yes, Burj Khalifa. I've been ready yet. <laughs> and say I this. <laughs> I can do this. I need to make a franchise and in the fourth one I'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is when I realised the person taking care of her is from the fourth film. So that really shook me. <laughs> yeah, she was like, oh, you're... Because she was such a minor role and then she'd been yeah. brought back and I don't get she... her character. No, she also says she's going to be taking... The daughter onto location with their mum. Onto oh, yeah, which confused me because they said she changed careers. So if you're going on location, usually means you're doing a film shoot. Oh no, she's a farmer now. She's at location at the farm. <laughs> don't be silly, Carl. This 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 is airtight. Don't 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 try and poke holes in it. Okay. But yeah, this is where I was like, oh, we learned Sharon's addicted to Reagan. Yep. She's like, I don't know, I'm obsessed with her. And everyone's like, fair. Okay, cool. They cool. go back to the house for a little bit. There's another giant moth yeah, <laughs> shot. There's quite, so this is when the film like starts to, I wouldn't say interesting, but not just stale. It just keeps interspersing these little dream sequences. Oh, it does. And we, oh God, the mystery's so awful. It's it just keeps showing these moths. You're like, oh, what's that? And the priest is also seeing them. Is that correct? Yeah. Because he's seeing the, like, the locust. He's seeing, he's order. seeing, yeah. And it's because Mirren, Max von Sydow's yeah. character, had done an exorcism back then or yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so we see, like, a, the, oh God, the effects are terrible. We see a swarm. Yeah. Like, it's... in this, and it's like this swarm comes and, like, attacks them as they're climbing a cliff. And I went and I was like, how much does 14 million buy you today? And so it's a 60 million dollar budget. I think... Baby driver. They spent baby driver uh, money on this film. Now you're putting that in there. That's a bit painful. <laughs> but, so they're in Africa. They're climbing up this massive hill. Um, we're trying to make sense of this nonsense. Because that's what this film is. Because they're, like, they're in Africa. Well, I don't get... Why does the demon want her to see this? No, it's helping her. The, the demon is... Zuzu. Help- Zuzu. <laughs> is, is Zuzu helping-, helping her? Yeah. Because by doing that, they go, oh, cool, now we know how oh, to... Oh, it's like queer demon <laughs> for the straight eye. It's like, we're trying to help your inner self. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name's Zuzu and I'm here to help. Reagan, let's get rid of that raggedy ass <laughs> name and get you back on track. I love your penthouse, but I hate your diet. <laughs> let's fix this up. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew this film would go down that route? <laughs> <laughs> um. So why? But so why is the demon trying to wants to be exercised? Uh, I think it wants to get more. I think it wants to be out of Reagan's body. I think it wants to be free. That's just a bit of a cliche that I think most films go down. I, that can only be the only reason, right? Yeah. So uh-huh. anyway. So anyway, the swarm. We see these flying shots and the swarms going. It kills these people on the cliff. Mm. Got a crawling up or down from a town. These African Catholics, I think they're Christian actually, because they do Christian rituals, are like at the top of this massive, massive cliff in Egypt. Is it Egypt or is it Africa? Somewhere in Africa. Yeah. I thought it was Egypt. <laughs> Which is, I like because uh, Reagan's like, I don't know, can you determine the location <laughs> of where your dreams are taking place? And she goes, I don't know, 
maybe Africa. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's definitely Africa. <laughs> but also... It's the largest <laughs> continent in the world. Because, <laughs> I don't know, Africa. And in the 1970s, I don't know, Google. So. Yeah, I love it. No, it's their version of Google's going to a museum and being like, I oh, know you see any, see any miniatures that look like what you're talking about? Yeah, that one there. Perfect. Yeah, great. I love it. It's on a cliff. Ooh, there's not many cliffs in Africa is my assumption. I assume so. <laughs> but this like flying effect, right? Yeah. It then gets attacked by a leopard. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, I, this, I was like, this is absolute nonsense, yeah. I wrote, because I don't get the plot whatsoever. I'm pretty annoyed at the synopsis, because that's just said it again. Yeah, that actually is the plot. It's filled, <laughs> filled with LSD just nonsense of a man that was scared of bees and like, I'm going to put them into film. I'm just going to skip ahead to a bit because like, who, I don't know, the, like literally the movie's so disjointed. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it, well, that's but like for the at the start that first forty minutes. Every scene starts, mm. and then it's kind of like, I guess we'll end here, and then the next one just starts <laughs> immediately. But we get uh, so Reagan uh, meets this random girl who can't talk. Yeah, right. And then she's like, "I was possessed by a demon, but don't worry, now it's gone, silly." That was that was insane. And so then they were like, "Ah, oh, her supernatural power fixed the daughter." And, like, performed a miracle. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing that I think it's, like, a positive version of... That's why I'm saying this is more of a positive depiction. Is because her demon... Or, like... She is... She's, she, she's she, performing miracles yeah. now. And the demon is trying to take over her. And we later find out the African boy. Because he is also a healer. Yeah. So I dislike this because it's basically saying she has the supernatural power to fix mentally disabled children, and I find that very problematic. Carl, this was made in 1970s. I don't think they, the treatment was that great back well, then. Well, they've got LGBT representation <laughs> in this demon. I don't know why they have to be <laughs> ableist. You know what? This film is absolutely disgusting. Have one gay character and two steps back was ridiculous. <laughs> um. Anyway, but I love the fact that so then Jean comes out and is like, like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't think your supernatural powers fix this girl. I don't believe in demons and religion. I'm a science girl. And I'm like, you invented a machine that goes into people's oh, dreams. Well, Why don't you have faith? And she's seen this demon. She's like, ah, it's a nightmare. I just... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe... We can't just gloss over the fact they have, like, this magical thing to see into people's minds and that's just like oh that's a plot point yeah don't don't think about it too much the it's like but it's like i get the fact that as like a sequel it's science versus religion but it's but not, it's not but it's like not that. I, but i'm like oh they're i don't want to say they're trying because even they're not really trying yeah. but i think that's an interesting theme you could explore oh, in a sequel to the exorcist but a lot of things in this film that i think could be great but they don't really do any They're of They're so, like, not half-baked, but, like, quarter-baked. Maybe, like, an eighth-baked. <laughs> just, just, like, baked. They've, they've preheated the oven, and they're like, we'll leave that. We don't want <laughs> And then that. they just let it burn. Yeah, they <laughs> burn the oven. Um, um, the other fun fact I have now yeah. is that I read, because, you know, my mind began to wander. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was <laughs> so bored. Oh, yeah. Um, was that uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, the killer, uh, the... would... <laughs> Yeah, go on. Would make his victims oh, no. watch over and over again. It is said that they would watch the first Exorcist and the third Exorcist. So even Jeffrey Doma, the most evil man in the world, disliked this film. Fuck off, no way. He was like, that's insane. So he was, he sat down, because he must have been a fan. Yeah. So he's watched it gone. I just don't know. It's a bit silly, isn't it? That Zuzu character? I'm not a fan. It's Jeffrey, D he's a monster. And he was like, I love it. It's like Siskel and Ebert are like, Siskel, Ebert, and Jeffrey Dahmer. Three thumbs down. <laughs> but he's just decapitating. He's cut off someone's hand. Just, yeah, he's yeah. dangling their thumb. It's a little like, little like, it's quite fun. He does a bit of cheekiness. Wow, what a, I guess he's actually. Cheek no, cl no clue how. Did, did they have, um, like, victims that survived? I don't know how this was <laughs> you yeah. But, like, I love that somebody's written it down. A victim was like, oh, thank God, you made me watch the second one. <laughs> you, 
You were like, oh yeah, so he freed me the other day. And I went, ah, oh, well, I wonder what his issues are with that second <laughs> one. So I sat down to watch it and I went, ah, oh, he's not a monster. No, you know what? He's got taste. That's <laughs> who has that better... Jeffrey. <laughs> who has a <laughs> go on? Say the joke. <laughs> who has better taste? Jeffrey Dahmer or Martin Scorsese? <laughs> Because at the moment, if you just take this little film, technically Jeffrey is a little bit, a bit wiser than Martin. No, oh. insane. Oh, <laughs> we do not condone the actions of Jeffrey. <laughs> you know what? We're not a fan of his work. <laughs> Why not? We are a fan of his opinion on film. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um. I also the score is very odd. I thought it was very Studio Ghibli. I don't know if you picked up on that, but it's very whimsy. It looks like the composer. It's the one guy from uh, Hateful Eight that just recently died. Really? Yeah. And the, like the thing and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, well, we did tons of great scores. Yeah, What's his did. name? His name's blanking to me. But yeah, I'm a big fan of him. Had no clue. Uh, Ennio Morricone. Ennio Morricone. I'm butchering the name. Any of macaroni? Wow, I don't know. smashed it. I don't, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I said macaroni at the end. <laughs> I thought you nailed that. I was like, wow. Thanks. I feel silly. Um, this film's long. This film's very long. But it's not like the kissing booth. It's not like each bit is silly and we can chat about for ages. This just drags. And then it has spikes of Ooh. nutsness. Yeah, right? It's out of zero or a hundred. Yeah. So basically, if we just want to skip ahead to when the priest is in Africa, this is a nuts sequence. Oh, yeah. In fact, this was when I was, like, not glued to the TV, but just, like, this was the most interested I'd been the whole time. Yeah, so the, the priest basically is like, hey, you know that body that fell? Yeah. I know where it is. <laughs> well, how do you know that? We've searched this area for ages. Which, it's been... You can't have searched very no. hard. He was, it was so easily found because he was like, he bounced off a rock, but like, wouldn't they have like cornered off like, I don't know, 200 meters, had a look around and very easily found. He was so intact. Yeah. It's absolutely bizarre. Just wedged between two logs. Yeah. But during this sequence, uh, Reagan's doing her little bit of tap dancing. Oh. And for some reason she has a connection with the priest. I, th so how I'm. While watching this, I just imagined it was like Harry Potter and Voldemort. I thought that like a bit of her soul had kept gone to the priest, and that was my idea because he's getting stoned by the African. Because they're Christian. like, you helped us find the body, therefore you must be the devil. Silly, <laughs> silly. I don't like that. Um. Well, you see, I would believe it for people that. <laughs> Decided to live on a cliff and you can only climb up or climb down it. Oh, no, 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 Carl. They've had lots of technological uh, advantages. They have a single chain right at the top that's about a metre long. Oh, they have rope. They have rope. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, so <laughs> I've written, they think the priest is a devil worshipper. They throw rocks at him, but Reagan feels it and it ruins her tap dance. And then I've just done a sad face. Oh, I did. A, I think I did a sad face as well. I was yeah. just like, oh. Oh, I was hoping she would prevail. I was actually more scared the tap dancing scene wasn't going to come back. It was just, hey, this is what Reagan's up to. Just yeah. tapping. Um, this is at the point where I thought the movie had turned into The Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Probably the Tom Cruise one as he's a sub in for Reagan. <laughs> It was like, I'm going to do but Climb the Burning Reaper, <laughs> and then I'm going to make Mummy 2. Yeah. I've only seen the second half of The Exorcist 2. <laughs> I assume that's what it was about. Uh, we then get to my favourite moment of the entire film. Yes. Which is a certain actor, I was not aware, was oh. going to be in this movie, <laughs> who popped up and blew my mind. Oh, and pop up does he... he this, <laughs> the priest has gotten to like the main African boy that he's seen in his vision. Yeah. He's got to him and he's like in this cave system that has like spikes in the ground. And the boy, who is now a grown man, says, come to me. Carl, who is this actor? James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. <laughs> James Earl Jones is in this film. Where Why is, is James Earl Jones in this film? He made the, He's made this film because he's in two of the silliest costumes I've ever seen. He's in <laughs> this African getup, which is like... In Zoolander, not in Zoolander, Tropic Thunder, where he's wearing the panda oh, yeah. head. It's insanely insensitive. I went, yeah. you basically got the only, like, beautiful, like, African-American man in Hollywood. And you were yeah. like, nah, he's in this now. He's an African man. Yeah. Um. So, so I, I love it because he's, he goes to step four. Yeah. He steps on the spikes. 
And it's like, oh my God, his feet are hurt. He falls down. It was all a dream. Carl, I was so confused at this point. So I, confused. I, 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 I turned away for a second and I was like, was that the twist? Was he dreaming the whole time? I wrote, cuts away. Jamzil Jones is a doctor now. No, a bug specialist. I think <laughs> <laughs> it's that. You're like, oh, thank God he's woken up in a hospital. He's like, no, no, no. No, no, no. We make bugs here. Come on. <laughs> I was like, you make bugs. <laughs> because... Okay, I, I, this was the point of the film where I was like, oh, cool, they have a metaphor that the bugs, because locusts eat everything. Yeah. But James has now engineered a bug to not um, eat everything. Yeah. And you know, you think about it, it's kind of like Reagan. It's a metaphor. See, it's kind of like life. See? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's just building things. You ever seen you ever seen James L. Jones in Field of Dreams? He's no. Like, Build it and they will come. So he's building baseball stadiums and he's building bugs. It's a joke for you, James L. Jones <laughs> fans out there. <laughs> Don't fans out there. <laughs> the Netherlands guys are loving that cool content. They're so big on this. G- they g- sure are. <laughs> <laughs> also. <laughs> oh, this is gonna hit. Shout out to our friends in Washington. It's 24 degrees, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you must be sleeping because it's currently... Nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> currently 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Whoa, I bet you're going to wake up to that sun at about 10 a.m. You know the issue is now, Fly up Carl? to about 20 degrees. You know degrees. the issue is now? For this gag to work, they have to be up at 5 a.m. <laughs> listening to this. Oh, well, it's going to be a bummer. In fact, your sun's setting at 8.07. <laughs> uh, all right. We're oh, no, low. Oscar. Uh, they've got a full week of thunderstorms. I'm pretty... Oh, uh, you know what? Shout out to the Washington guys out oh, there. It's going to be a rainy day. Shall we name them? They're all Jeans. <laughs> if you're in Washington, your name's Gene. If you're in the Netherlands, James, James Reagan. Reagan. <laughs> We just ticked off. All right, that's done. We've done. We've done the quota for the day. Oh god, I can't. All right. Anyway, what was the? There's the bug shit. <laughs> that's the thing with this film. It just steps on you. There's just two hours of fucking nothing, and then um, there's and everything. So anyway, suddenly I think the priest is possessed when he, he comes is. back. He is by who? I don't know. Zuzu. Zuzu. <laughs> no. Z- I'm being serious. Is it Zuzu? I'm being serious, yeah. He's just... So Zuzu's in two of them? Yeah. But he's very not... But I don't think he's possessed fully, because I think he's... Maybe he had, actually. No, no, he... A little bit. He's a little no. bit possessed. And then he gets on a train. And then I... <laughs> so at this point, now Reagan is following the priest onto a train... Nurse Ratchet and the other person are like, Oh my god, they're gonna go to the house again... Carl, this is the boringest 20, <laughs> 25 minutes of my life. It is the least tense chase scene I've ever seen committed to film. You weren't you weren't into it when they were driving the car and somebody bloody and wounded is like, help me. And they're like, cuts to them on the plane. Oh, I was like, maybe he's possessing a bunch of people to come about. Yeah, to stop them. Yeah. I was very confused. No, but it's not. It's just a man that's wounded and they're like, oh, I'm a doctor. Never mind. Well, so they're on the plane. It looks like they're about to crash for a second. And I went, oh my God. (laughs) This is going to be so exciting. This film is such a tease. (laughs) That 25 minutes, you're going to go, oh my God, they're going to get, like, all these aliens are going to get them. All these, like, zombie people are going to attack them. Nah, it's fine. The plane's going to crash. The plane's going to crash. It's going to sweat. And it's like, no, it's not. And they're like, oh my God, they're not going to be able to get a cab. No, they can get a cab. They can get a cab. It's just absolutely bizarre. Also, they get onto a bus, and I just wrote, the priest abuses a bus driver. He's on his break, he's eating a sandwich. The bus driver doesn't have to live by your fucking rules, guy. Yeah, what a prick. Oh, anyway, then they get a cab, they stumble into another accident. Oh, yeah, just more accidents. More do you reckon accidents. they were like, did we film that last accident? Or do we have to do that? Well, should we film another one for safety? Let's get another one. Yeah. We're also using film reels, so we'll have to use it in the film. Is that cool? Yes, of course. Don't worry about that. So this is where we get to, like, a huge set piece that's all built. So yeah. it's, like, the street's built. The exterior of the house is built. This is, like, every... So, like, this is what we were saying before. Like, this is where they've rebuilt the whole scene. And we're an hour and 50 in. This film yeah. has no substance and then just has nuts moments. So, yeah, it's gone very quickly. Don't watch this. <laughs> 
But Absolutely yeah, wild. The sw- so the priest goes into Reagan's old bedroom. Yeah. Then the swarm attacks. The swarm causes the cab to crash. Mm. It horribly kills the cab driver, oh, which yeah. I was really upset about. Yeah. He didn't do anything wrong. But here's my thing, Carl. 1970s seatbelt technology wasn't great. Why weren't the two people in the back more killed? Mm. Injured. You see, like, I have this I have this understanding. It's 1977, and the cab driver is black. Ah. The two actresses are white. So clearly, Rachel Prejudices won out this time. Wow, that's really not powerful. Mm. Tell you what. Not a fan of that. No, is, not a fan of that at all. Is the car racist? Or is the filmmaker racist? I think it... it's a combination of the car and the filmmaker being racist. Yeah, that's 1970s. They're basically gone, ah, well, if you're black, you're either African or you're a cab driver that we're going to kill off <laughs> seconds after seeing you. Also, so, James is here. <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's just chilling. Who's <laughs> James? James Earl Jones. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. You're not a personal... Uh, well, his friend's called James. Well, I'm, I'm like, ah, it's fine. Don't worry. Well, no. Nah. Okay. I doubt you're his friend and haven't fucking seen Feel the Dreams. <laughs> he told me not to watch that one. We're going to He's a big fan <laughs> of his own of that films. one. He's in his own film. He said, he wasn't like, hey, if you've got to watch one of my movies, better jump onto the heretic. <laughs> <laughs> not Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, Feel the Dreams. The heretic, and then Star Wars, he's ashamed of. He's just a bit, they're a bit silly, aren't they? <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, he's, he's what I want you to watch. Do you watch that John Favreau version of The Lion King? My <laughs> voice is lush and that. <laughs> what about the original Lion King? Oh, it's oh. so derivative. Oh, no. Oh, it's just God. Hamlet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <Ugh>. with cubs. <laughs> Gross. Palatable for a younger generation that oh, would no. carve their way between good and evil <laughs> for such a long time. That new one, you got to check it out. They got Billy Eichner. He's in it. <laughs> Billy Eichner and Seth Rogen are the only good things in that fucking movie. I was thinking about that. They I... hold that movie afloat. Oh, but it's only because they're the only new thing in the film. Yeah. I think. I think we've got Rose. Because we were so starved for something new in that film. And then they show up. You're like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Just a little breath. I just hate how that whole movie... I get that it's like, oh, it's the realistic one. But I'm like, it's just one colour palette. <laughs> it's hideous, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know, but they did the Jungle Book. Great. Yeah, but that's the jungle. There's so much colour in the jungle. The Lion King's like, the animals are yellow and the landscape's yellow. Because the funniest the thing... the sky's bluish. Because the funniest thing is they go, look at look at the, uh, look at the outside. <laughs> look at the, ah, uh, lovely lushness, and then look at the dead one. And it's, it's the same thing. Oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> I remember I watched that in like a full cinema at IMAX so everybody went... What? <laughs> that desert's also our desert? It's dead now. Also, people laughed when Mufasa died. Yeah. Because it was so weirdly done. Like, it's shot for shot what the cartoon is, but like... Not drum- like not stylized, so yeah. it's just like, oh, it's a five meter drop. He probably might break a leg, but he, yeah. I mean, he's dead. Also, then the cub can't emote, because it's a fucking no, cub. No, so it's just like... So it's like, Dad, are you... Oh no, are you alive? Ah, uh, it's like, <laughs> it starts to try and eat him. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what happens in the wildlife? Or like, ah, oh, it's a good dinner, <laughs> going to waste. Oh, nom, 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 nom. I like just jumping into Lion King because this film, now I can't be honest, I don't know what happened because it finished, because we're about to finish. Yeah. I, my last note was it gets a bit rapey because the de- what I thought, the, the demon becomes Reagan and, and looks a bit older, but then the priest Yeah, jumped. so Reagan, the actress, refused to get back into makeup. She said she didn't want to go through the makeup again. So yeah. it's actually a different actress playing, playing the demon. No, no, no. I mean, like, the demon that the priest sees. Oh, right. The sort of, like, her. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and she's got that cheaper version of, like, a demon on her. Right? Yeah. It's like, oh, the eyes are different. Exactly. Teeth. Yeah. So yeah. he, the priest jumps on her, going to have sex with her, because that's what the demon needs, I think. Zoo, zoo. And then, I don't know what oh, no, just the happened. The sets start to fall apart. Yeah. Sharon burns alive. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know why. No. I don't, she just like lights herself on fire. She decides that she's, like, I was like, oh, is this like a twist? But she doesn't do anything. No, I thought she she... burns herself alive and then apologizes for it. Yeah. I don't know if she was possessed or something. And that's happening. And then the swarm's happening. So Reagan starts doing the spin. Yeah. The African boy. And they all, all turn to grasshoppers. Yeah. (laughs) That's pretty much it. That's it. (laughs) Other thing is, uh, when they've got the demon in her, he rips out her heart after punching it so yeah. much. 
I which know. like I don't really mind violence, but it felt a bit weird when this film really didn't have much, and then this priest just beating this sixteen-year-old girl. Also, no priests of uh, sorry, no extras have come out. People live on the street. Oh yeah, There's a lot of mayhem going on. You might want to like, and then right at the end, they just run off. Reagan and the priest run off. Oh yeah, she the Jean goes up and goes. I understand now. The world won't. Not yet. And then the priest is like, don't worry, I'll take care of her. Mm. And they kind of like walk off into the sunset. Yeah, but it's the broken house that... Well, they, they go and then it's weirdly on a cliff now, like yeah. looks over the city. Yeah. But also, she's got a mum. You exactly. can't just take that kid. Well, they She'll ex- come after you. Well, she's they expecting... <laughs> she's a big movie star. She was. Yeah. Now she's not. And then they do this... <laughs> 360 turn and there's like 900 people oh, all of a sudden like, hey what was that that's crazy <laughs> yeah wild and then that's where the movie ends very abruptly like i was over the moon because i'm like thank god oh yeah thank- i was like oh when credits rolled yeah. i cried oh, I and i went i'm free i'm, free. <laughs> I'm done yes. i can just leave i was so broken i'm convinced this movie is what made me ill that's fair enough. Yeah. Zizi went to <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, 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 um, Oh, God. All right. You want to say something uh, positive about this movie? The reason I gave it a one and a half is because, although a lot of it is painful, I thought some of it was nice. Uh, again, I think... <laughs> set, set, yeah, glowing review. Artemis Fowl did this, but I think this therapy section was much prettier. I thought the hexagon set design was very pretty. What is with these bad fucking movies and having therapy in glass? glass. Why? What is this obsession with? (laughs) (laughs) Was the set designer (laughs) Kenneth (laughs) Brenner? Hey, Kenneth, we know you're 12. Do you mind doing this for this film? (laughs) Yes. It was a great idea. Did it once, like I did bad. But I'll bring it back 40 years later (laughs) and it will be perfect. That's the only thing that's in a bad film. Yeah. I don't have a lot... Good to say. I think this is the worst movie we've reviewed on the podcast so far. It's definitely the most painful. Yeah, it was rough to sit through. I think the performances are fine, and some of the location scouting's okay. (laughs) (laughs) I thought the miniatures were quite... I thought they looked like miniatures. I thought they were bad miniatures. You want to see good miniatures? Watch any Nolan film. That's, that's, but 1970s. I don't fucking care. <laughs> you don't get better at making miniatures. It's just art. You just hire good artists. <laughs> right? Literally. Yeah, was no, no. It's literally... <laughs> <laughs> just rocks. Wow, the rocks kind of look like rocks. <laughs> Put that on the DVD. I'm literally constantly watching Christopher Nolan's films and he's like, yep, that was a miniature. And I'm like, but that was Christian Bale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make him a miniature. Literally, the miniatures are so good. Well, we actually killed Christian Bale in that last scene, so we had to make him a little miniature. I didn't, up. I didn't realize the city in like Blade Runner twenty forty nine was a miniature. Is it it looks actually... fucking great. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that film. literally, like look up the making of it. There's so many good miniatures. No, including this one. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Literally, the miniature that they built for this movie mm. is the miniature they then put in that museum <laughs> and pointed at and went, "That's the place <laughs> where we need to go." Wow, it looks so much like the one we need to go. That's so lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Has the same people <laughs> crawling on it in the same positions. Yeah. Oh god. All right. What else did I write down? I liked. I thought if this film was mm, a thousand times better, there's a little bit of. Kubrick esness to it, but that might just be because he like there's certain the first scenes... one's far more Kubricky. Oh, definitely, but I definitely think there's a little bit of it there. <laughs> a little Sprinkle. bit, a little bit of naughty Kubrick. A little bit of a naughty Kubrick. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right. Well, I think also I mean brain damage. This I didn't mind the locust motif, but I don't know why it was in this film. I like. I think the science. Do you reckon the director has a fear of bugs. Maybe. Like, here's the thing. I don't know how you finish this movie, or or even on paper, or while directing it. Yeah. Go, I've made a horror film. Well, actually, I was looking it up. Apparently, the main... Everyone that everyone that's made these exorcist, exorcist films haven't thought of them as horror films. Which makes sense, because was the first one is scary for its time. It's a bit dated now. Mm. Was this one in any way scary? No, but I mean, the... Like, it's the same, it's the same thing, it's where it's like, if you're making a genre movie like a horror, Mm. look at your story as not being a genre film, so that it can overcome the genre tropes, right? It's like, Ari Aster doesn't make Hereditary in Midsummer 
in his mind, as horror films. Yeah. Like, The Hereditary is a very slow-moving family drama about grief. Yeah. And then has these horror elements in it. Mm-hmm. And I think that movie is genuinely quite tense. Mm. Right? So I don't think I'm going to give these people a pass when they're like, I'm, oh, not them, <laughs> I'm not giving them a pass. I'm saying they've fumbled the bag. What was my, I like the locust motif. What, how did you get that? What are you saying about me? The same, same. You're fucking into bugs, dude. <laughs> I'm into bugs. You're into bugs. Okay, I'm a big fan of bugs. I like the locust. Maybe we'll watch, I don't know, what's a famous bug film? Bugs Life. No, uh, Ants. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> oh, should we review Ants next week? Yeah. Yay, Ants. <laughs> Ants. Ants. <laughs> Woody Allen, he's ants. <laughs> is that the Sylvester remote? Stallone, he's ants. Who else is ants? The Kevin Spacey's, is he ants? Christopher Walken's ants. It's insane. Christopher Walken, he's ants. <laughs> oh, ants. All right, Carl. <laughs> Carl, I highly recommend on ants. <laughs> um, Who would watch this? I think everyone should give it a look. <laughs> everybody <laughs> should give ants a look. Here's the thing, guys. Ants needs to be more celebrated than a bug's life. God, I think a bug's life is terrible. We're getting off topic. Oscar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Carl, do you have any... Without seeing the third one, because I've heard great things about the third one. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think this one really tarnished it. Yeah. And then the original director came back and was like, I'm going to salvage this. Yeah. And apparently the third one's very good. I mean, it's got sort of lowish reviews, but I think that's because this one really tanked it. But yeah, without seeing this, where would you go from here? Oh. God, I would be, it's all about James Earl Jones. Yep. It's all in Africa. It's all miniatures. <laughs> miniatures. Uh, Reagan is pers- still pursuing tap dance. Mm-hmm. She's still not good at it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I was terrified of those tap dancing scenes that this would go nowhere and it oh, didn't go anywhere it didn't, didn't go she anywhere I would love it if she tap danced them into being grasshoppers <laughs> or something uh, so I think she would come into Africa somehow mm. maybe she has teleporting powers now oh yeah she's got a lot here's of the thing she, so she's she's now got like a Sherlock Holmes style Baker Street house yep that's like, I'll fix your disabled child with mm. my supernatural powers. She also can read minds yeah. because she has this light bulb thing. It's going to be Reagan, home of reading minds <laughs> and fixing ill children. And she's going to... But it doesn't matter if they're ill because every child's special. But if you want them to be the normal standard, I can do that. She then fixes so many children and mm. reads so many minds. Mm. She achieves 100% enlightenment. And that gives her the power to travel through space and time. She meets up with every single performance of James L. Jones. Wow. And they all intersect in an Avengers-style film called The Exorcism of Mr. Jones. Powerful. Is he... Is his spirit? He's not in it. <laughs> They couldn't get him back. They couldn't get him. They couldn't get him back. <laughs> it's like <laughs> being John Malkovich. They wrote the whole story. Went, what do you mean you're not signing on? He's like, it's no for me. It's no thank you. I don't really want to jump onto that. Oh, God. That's mine, Charlie. And you know what the worst part is? That'd be better than this. <laughs> I would. We'd get Charlie Kaufman to do the drapes. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was one other thing I liked. In the cave, they have a tapestry that I kind of liked. Four out of five. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do we do Carl and Oscar do like design? <laughs> Just, but not even like. I like his well. shoes. He's like, mm, shoes. Good. Nice. You got any uh, sequel ideas? Well, you've taken mine. Just... <laughs> yeah, I read your yeah, shit. Like, Why you do that? <laughs> no, I just had this little note that we could. It was Carl at Madagascar because the first one sort of, you know. <laughs> It's sort of in New York and they're trying to get away. And then the second one's in Africa. So maybe the third one, they start a circus. It's about a circus. I yeah. Guess. And a French lady. Well, that makes sense because she's can read minds and yeah. stuff. And Max von Sydow's there. Yeah. I guess. He's it's back. water for elephants for exorcisms. And Noah Bombach has had another messy divorce <laughs> and is now writing this one. I love it. Speaking of like other exorcism films, uh, one that I watched in high school mm. that didn't end up being very good, but I always liked the beginning of, which is called The Last Exorcism. It's like a handheld one about a priest that it's like a documentary crew that they go to do an exorcism on a farm and it gets out of hand. I think I've seen that one too, but I can't. Mm. Did you watch it young? Yeah, I watched it young. I watched it in cinemas. Um, and like as a young 
guy, I found it, like, impressionable. Mm. Uh, it just didn't, like, have a very good, like, ending. Yeah. It was, like, I remember there was this whole thing. It was, like, the, it was, like, a picture again. And mm. it was, like, basically all the main characters were dead in specific ways on the mm. picture. And I was, like, oh, cool, we'll lead up to that. And it does it, but it kind of happens off camera. Yeah. And I'm, like, oh, disappointing. That's a shame. But, um, I think that's an okay, like, exorcism film from memory. It's probably not. The sequel's written by Damien Chazelle. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's one of his, uh... <laughs> Earlier raising yeah. gigs, he was, like... Yeah. Gotta pay them bills. Gotta make a film about drumming, I swear to God. <laughs> yes. Gotta get J.K. Simmons and then I'm gonna be fucking so escape angry. this. I'll win my Oscar very young. <laughs> um uh Exorcism of Emily Rose is quite good mm. by Scott Derrickson. I like that one. Doesn't Sidious have an exorcist? Nah, kinda. It's like a pseudo exorcism film. Because oh, it's, right. yeah, it's the boy it's the boy that's wanted. Yes. And they kind of go in. Did they go into his mind? Yeah, it's like, it's kind of like a horror inception. And it's very, you know what? It's actually a bit like this. It but is. It's the, I it's, the about fact it, yeah. that, it's the fact that the boy is essentially born with like a shining level power. Yeah. And then ghosts gravitate towards it to inhabit his body, mm. which kind of makes a lot of the ghosts around haunt this house because yeah. they all want to be in him. Yeah. yeah. I really like, well, I've, Seen the I've seen three of the Insidiouses. I don't I like all three. I think the second one was good. I remember the second one being weird because I remember the first one, it ends on such a terrifying note, that like photo yeah. that terrified me as a kid. And then the second one resolves that. Yeah. And it's like we got rid of her. And yeah. It's like, oh cool. And then what's the third one about? The third one's about a different case of insidious. Oh no, I have seen that one. Is that one where like a boy dressed up as a girl? Or is that the second no, one? No, it's also the second one. Okay, never mind. The, yeah, the third one's like, it's about a girl, and it's just got Lynn Shay, who's the chick that dies at the end of the first yeah. one. But yeah, and then I've heard the final key's fine. The third one's good because it's Lee Winnell, who like wrote them, but he also did Upgrade and The Invisible Man, cool. and I think he's I think he's a good director. Yeah. Um, and he's Australian, so shout out to shout him. Shout out. He's listening to this. He's like, yay. <laughs> he's sitting in, his, sitting in his humble home. He was sitting, he was furious like, oh, the Netherlands and the Washington's got a shout out. <laughs> yeah, where are the Aussies? <laughs> guys are, wait, no, what were the, the Washingtons and jeans? Yep. Ah, uh, shout out to you, jeans and Reagans. Okay, Carl, who would watch this? Fans of Martin Scorsese's early work? I don't know. But it's not even <laughs> his early work, it's just his opinions of early work. I think if you... You know what? If you're, like, a... If you're very religious, and the first exorcist really offended you... Yeah. This is for you. Okay. I think it's not scary, and I don't think it gives religion a bad rap. Yeah. It's not very violent. No. It's not... There's nowhere near as much profanity. They don't make the child do anything kind of gross or sickening or anything like that. It's much more palatable to an older person. Definitely. I think. I think they were going for a PG rating. Yeah, they were going for a very young rating on it. And yeah. they still get... I think they still slapped an R on it. They were going for PG-13 and they gave it an R. Um, so I would say, yeah, if, you, like, if you're somebody that's easily offended by horror, this is horror for you. You reckon? I don't know. I mean, it's pretty... I wouldn't... Yeah, I mean, we have a friend that's scared of horror films. Mm. Would you recommend this to him? Oh, absolutely not. No. Fucking hate it. Because here's the other thing. It's also a terrible it's film. It's a terrible film. That's why I think you have to have seen the first Exorcist. Yeah. Thought you were going to like it. Hated it. Yeah. Then this one's for this you. This one's for you. Yeah. This is what you want, I think. Okay. Because here's my thing. The Exorcist was a big hit. Yeah. A huge huge hit biggest film for one billions time. yeah B- like billions in terms of today's money yeah like 400 million back then or whatever yeah like it was a a crowd pleasing hit mm. so if you didn't like that you were the odd one out yeah especially if you're not religious as well yeah yeah if you was if you're somebody the person that thought you were gonna love it because mm. you love horror mm. and you felt left out by it yeah and i assume you probably felt the same as this director yeah the, he's made a film for you. There you go. That's why I think this is. Who would watch this? Them. Just them. Outsiders. It's the outsiders of. But it's such a specific outsider because not that you didn't hate the film because it's like religious, like and like all that sort of stuff. He just went. Oh, I don't know. A bit weird. How many locusts in that film? 
I'm not sure about that one. Needs more bugs. bugs. Come on. <laughs> Just watch a bugs live. Come on, we're in a marathon. God, do you reckon it got to like 1999 and he like splurged? It's like, oh my god, yes, a bug's life. <laughs> Finally, the technology's there. Oh, yes. That's <laughs> what I was trying. He was trying this to make a bug's life. <laughs> this is what I was trying to make back in 1977, yeah. and they didn't get yeah. it. <laughs> oh. All right, Oscar, who would watch this? I think if you watch this, because I was trying to understand where Martin Scorsese was coming from, because he did he didn't because he just like said he got like, a lot of catholic guilt so he watched it and thought that this was i think there's some what does he mean by catholic guilt he has a lot of catholic guilt because like he, like he it's like he's catholic but he kind of hates the fact he's catholic no he the fact the fact it? that like your whole life is like just sitting yeah and in his early life he was quite like a part did a lot of cocaine all that sort of stuff yeah so i think why so short cocaine don't do it when you're young wild mm. wow it's also why I can't see well. Andy has such bushy eyebrows. <laughs> cocaine. We're notoriously, we're notoriously anti-cocaine on this podcast. Oh yeah, I'll tell you one thing, Carl. There's one thing we don't like. It's cocaine. Oh, sorry. Let me uh, hit this up. <laughs> <laughs> That's an audio medium for your baby. <laughs> That's right. I think if you... I think if you... I don't want to say watch this film, but there's like... If you slice out little bits of it, you could take it and put it in another film... And that could be a better film. And I think this might have... He might be a little bit affected by this. Mm. But again, not a great film. I don't... If you're a filmmaker and you want to see... How does how not to do a sequel, I guess? <laughs> it's a good it's, lesson. Yeah, like it's notoriously known as one of the worst sequels any made. Would you agree with that? I yeah, I would. To... I think it's up there with like Jaws 2. Yeah. Like in terms of like famous sequels. Mm. Like, I mean, Jurassic Park 2 is like still fun. It has good it still, it still works. I yeah. guess it's definitely weaker, but it's yeah. not like this. <laughs> no, it's like here's the thing. It's like, you I get how The Exorcist is celebrated as one of the best horror films ever made. Mm. This is genuinely one of the worst films I've ever seen. Yeah, I think and it's not like haha, we can laugh along with it. It's just There were there were bits that I thought were hysterical. Yeah. If this could be an eighty minute film. Oh god, that'd be great, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. But that two hour mark really and that final chase scene just really just why don't you like, sit down and edit 40 minutes out of this you know where you can start the bugs <laughs> <laughs> that's but isn't that the best bit technically no where would you say the best bit of this film is the best bit it's of this the film. bugs it's not the bugs it's a stick with a light <laughs> that's a that's a phenomenal piece of technology I'll tell you right now that is a that is an oscar winning piece of set design and props <laughs> They blew the budget on that therapy scene and went, we've got to make this what? <laughs> I love it because oh, they no. definitely went, somebody got a broom, <laughs> they cut off the broom bit and yeah. kept the stick and they put two flashlights on it and they went, oh my God, how much did that cost you? And they went, a hundred grand. A hundred grand, it's crazy. Can you pay me up front? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Can I get it in cash? I'm going to go do some cocaine with Marty down the road. <laughs> and here he's really keen for this one. <laughs> Yes, you should see him in his little glasses. Uh, yeah, you know what? I can kind of get why he likes this in terms of... Because he's also a huge fan of, like, Ari Aster. Mm. If you have a look at, like, horror films that he likes... Yeah. He likes what people consider highbrow horror. Yeah. So, ones that are, like, much more of a... Something else. But with I think horror I in it. I thought this one kind of had it. Yeah. It has, like... I feel like if you just take like just reshuffles and stuff around it could be something great you know it's very similar to these two films is uh the sixth sense and i don't mean like because i i really like the sixth yeah. Sense, but i think it's very similar in the ways that it's like it's a kid that's haunted and it's like an investigation into mm. the kid right so i don't yeah. know why it's like i kind of can see how they tried to do an investigation into a kid again for the sequel. I guess it, so, it really yeah. fell apart though. I don't know why they didn't go down the route of like if they had to start doing brain tests and things on her again. It's like mm. it all comes flooding back and that would be very traumatic for her. Yeah, I feel like but again, the director didn't want to do that. Yeah. So he was like, I guess I'll go to Africa. But then it's also like why even use any of the same stuff? Like I don't know why you do a direct sequel then. Yeah. Do do well, cause it, a new plot. I think the the writer of the book The Exorcist had already written something like this. He'd written quite a few. Yeah. And the director was like, I like this one. I like the one where Reagan 
is good. I like the one with his two eyes as the number. <laughs> heretic. What does heretic mean? We're like an... I think I looked it up and I went, oh, that makes sense. It's just not in today's vocabulary. Okay. It's like electric boogaloo. We just, saw, we just don't really get it. A person believing in or practicing religious heresy. Cool. All right. So uh-huh. it makes sense, but yeah. like... I don't fucking know what heretic means. No, and I'm going to place the blame on the director. I'm going to start using it in day-to-day life. <laughs> I'm going to be like, hey, God, you're heretic. Ho- like, heretic? Erotic? Erotic? <laughs> no, heretic. Oh, like that Second Exorcist film? No. <laughs> 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 it's all cool improv, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carl, on that note. <laughs> uh, what are we going to be reviewing next week, Oscar? Uh, I believe we're going to be reviewing My Teacher, My Obsession. Get keen for that. Yeah, I have no idea how to find it. I assume you can buy it on YouTube or something like Let's that. Let's do that. Alright guys, thank you for listening. Tell your friends about us. Maybe one day we'll read out your weather. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. And if you have a film you'd like us to review, or questions you'd like to ask, email us at askwwwtpodcast at gmail.com. You can leave us five stars on iTunes or any sort of praise anywhere. It helps new listeners find us and our egos grow. Alternatively, don't do anything and see if we care. Yep, balls in your court. Thanks for listening. See you next week.